Hello guys, we got another DIY project we're going to be working on today. We're actually working on our Subaru project car. Uh, we're going to be fabricating a front chassis brace. This is the type of brace that connects the lower rails, the lower frame rails with the radiator support. It's supposed to increase uh, the front end stiffness and give, gives you a little bit better cornering feel and stuff like that. We actually did this project before for our Subaru WRX STI. And the, the, the same basic procedures will apply for many other Subaru models like the WRX, STI, Forester, and so on. So join us as we get started. So as with all metal fabrication projects, we will need some tools, starting with a saw. A good metal saw is very important. I prefer to use my little band saw. Uh, but you could use a grinder or something something similar. Uh, you will need also a drill press is ideal however you could probably get away with just having a drill and a good selection of drill bits um, and a welder. Welder is important. I use this um, Eastwood uh, MIG welder. Uh, it, I, I had very good luck with it and it's not an endorsement I, I just really enjoy using it for the price point I don't think you can go wrong with Eastwood welder at least. Um, and as far as the material, we'll have we'll need some tubing. We'll need both some square and round tubing. I I, I like to use the uh, smaller diameter. This isn't quite an inch. This is like a this is like a three fourth of an inch. But the important thing is whatever diameter you're using, they have to be the same. The, this is important, especially when it comes to uh, welding the parts together they have to be same or very similar in outer diameter so let's get started so let's start by fabricating our individual mounting points and we'll do that by using this uh, round tubing we're going to be cutting out uh, four sections inch and a quarter uh, in length so let's do that now Once you have these cut, you got to find some washers. The washers should be the same diameter as the inner portion of the tube, as these are. Uh, if you can see. So I think you know where we're going with this. We're going to wa weld these washers to these tubes. So now we can focus our attention on this square tubing. What we will need, we'll need to drill a hole. And uh, preferably you want to use a, <coughs> a hole saw bit like this one. And you want to drill a hole the same width as the tubing. As you can see it's the same width. And you want to drill a hole right on the edge so you don't waste a lot of good material. So now that we have our hole drilled through this square tubing, you should have something that looks like this. And the reason we, we made this is so that it would fit our round tubing snugly. And you have to make sure this is even because you want to get that 90 degree. And we're not attaching anything yet, we're just, we're just, we're still working on this piece. Now the next part is also cutting, is going to be cutting this to size, so you want to measure from the inner portion, outmost inner portion of this bevel mark, uh, the circle, whatever you call it, uh, two inches. Two inches and mark the spot and make the cut. So as you can see the part is cut. I also added a little 45 degree angle here. Um, as you can see this is where we made the round cut and this is where the angle is. So all we have to do is replicate this and make another one of these. So now that we have our two little square pieces cut and ready, we can move on to the welding. And the way we're going to be welding, we're going to be welding it to these, to the round tubing, and we're going to weld it right towards the outer edge. Not where we put the cap, not where we welded the washer, but 
towards the outer lip. So now that we have all four of our mounting points fabricated, we can move on to the brace portion of the project and it will be made out of this uh, round tubing. It will simply connect all the uh, all, all of the mounting points together and uh, for that we'll need to do some measurements and also uh, uh, also take the angles at which it has to be cut. This part is important so it's important to spend some time taking the angles, taking the measurements so that we don't have to cut two or three times. So let's get to it. So we finally welded on our little top hats. These parts are going to be used to connect to where our factory hood latch goes, the top bolts, top two bolts. So this, this uses the same factory bolts to bolt into. Now the tricky part is the bottom part which connects to this little bracket we made earlier. It connects something like this, if this is the front of the car it will connect like this. The problem, you see, is finding the right angle. So, to do that, uh, it's a little tricky, kind of a tight space, but I, I cheat with this tool. I don't even know what angle it is. I just, you know, it tells you, but it doesn't really matter for this purpose. I just set it at the right, the, uh, the angle that it wants to be when I test fit, fit it without welding. Tighten the screw, and then all I have to do is replicate that angle and uh, weld it to this piece. We made a cut, now it's time for the test fit. So this is what we were able to accomplish yesterday. We welded our top mounting points here. However, we didn't weld the lower ones that are right here. The reason why I didn't do that yesterday is I wanted to tack weld them on the car just to make sure we don't have any fitment issues later. And same on this side. So nothing on the bottom is yet welded, so we're going to weld it right on the car. So now, as you can see, this is fully welded. We actually had to remove these after we tacked them to fully weld them out, but uh, both mounting points are now as you can see on permanently our crossbar is going to connect both of these tubes and it's going to go from here to here so let's measure out the crossbar and start cutting So we're doing our final fitment and after this it's time to do some welding. So we tack this together on the car and it's time to do our final welds. So as you can see the fabrication part of the project is done, so now we can move on to the finish work. Actually there is one last thing I want to add to this brace and that is some mounting points for Hella horns that we're going to be installing in the near future. So let's make the brackets and uh, weld them up.
So finally the tedious process of sanding is complete. This is what we have. We also added these little bunny ears that we're going to use for our hella horns, which will be installed at a later time. So now all we have to do is paint it and install it in the car. And now for the finished product. Now I'm sure there's going to be questions about fitment. As many of you know, this generation 2014 Forester uh, has the, um, uses the grill to funnel air into the intercooler. Well, in our case, we don't need any of that stuff, any of that plastic shroud and everything that's under behind the grill. We're actually bringing back the hood scoop, so the air will be supplied from the top, not from the grill. Uh, as far as the finish, I'm sure some of you noticed it has this wrinkle finish on it. Uh, I believe, I've, I've done this project a million times and I believe the best way uh, to finish these uh, braces um, is either by powder coating or by using uh, rubberized paint. And the reason for that is that when, when you're driving you're exposed to the elements at high speed, little rocks, rock chips and stuff hit it. Um, it, it, you want to use something durable. That's why I prefer either rubberized paint or um, powder coating. But at this point, I believe we are all set. We will. I already ordered the hella horns, so once we get those, we'll install those, and we'll finish up the car shortly. So uh, stay tuned. We'll make more videos. We'll do more cool stuff.